Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about ionic compounds. We'll begin by exploring ionic compounds by just first discussing what ions are. So an ion is a name that's just given to describe a charged particle. And that particle has the ability to become charged either through the gain or the loss of the valence electrons. Now if we remember, the valence electron is the electron that exists on the valence shell which is known as the outside shell of the atom. When it loses a valence electron, it will lose a negative charge. So in the case of sodium, the loss of the negative charge is going to create a positive charge, which is why we get the ion Na+. Now ionic compounds are compounds which are composed of ions. Ions being the cation, which is positive, and the anion, which is negative. We can describe an ionic compound as being binary if it contains ions of two elements. So something like NaCl or even CaCl2 are going to be examples of binary ionic compounds. Ionic compounds can also be formed using polyatomic ions. A defining feature of these ionic compounds is that they have this so-called lattice structure. The lattice structure provides its strength and looks like this on the right hand side. There are multiple different types of lattice structures with this diagram demonstrating the particular structure for sodium chloride which comes about as a result of something called cubic packing array. Notice that the lattice resembles the scaffolding of a building and that's utilized to provide strength and structure when we are developing a building. We will discuss the ionic structure to help explain empirical formula. Here we have two images which demonstrate the cubic packed array of sodium and chlorine in sodium chloride. Now the ionic lattice has infinite units and we should not take this in the literal sense of infinite. The lattice definitely contains infinite units but it's in the sense that there are too many for us to count and therefore the number is going to vary depending on the size. That's because if we look at this structure on the right hand side, what we notice is that there are many units, and there is going to be an infinite number of units which create this lattice. What this means is that the lattice is actually just going to be one molecule altogether. The empirical formulae are the most simplified formula which are given to ionic substances. The way that we work them out is by using a ratio of the components. So for example, here we have a hydrocarbon ethylene, C2H6. If we simplified this, we'd simplify it to CH3, and this is going to be the empirical formula for C2H6. Similarly, the way that we would do it for C6H6 is we would give it an empirical formula of CH. This is just simplified by dividing the subscripts by the highest common factor. So sodium chloride, which has an infinite number of units, is going to be simplified to NaCl. Let's look at these images again and see how it is that sodium chloride is simplified. If we look at the diagram on the left hand side and the right hand side as references, the sodium ions are represented by these yellow spheres. If we look on the right hand image, we can see that there are four sodiums in each of these edges. Each of these are going to add up to one quarter of a unit of sodium. And since there are 12 edges, we can see in the 3D, that means we're going to have a total of three sodiums in there. There's also one in the very center, which we can see on the left hand side, one in the center, which is going to add to an extra one. So in one unit of sodium chloride, because of this cubic packed array, we are going to have four units of sodium. Now we can count the green chlorine. Each of these corners is going to be one eighth of a chlorine. Since there are eight of them, that's going to be one unit of chlorine. Each of these faces is half of a chlorine, and since there are six faces, that's six halves, that gives us three chlorines. So we have a total of one chlorine from all the corners, and we have three chlorines from each of the faces. That means we have a total of four Na and four Cl per unit. Each one cubic unit is going to contain four chlorine ions and four sodium ions. Since it's Cl4 and Na4, or we can swap it around, Na4, Cl4, this is going to be simplified to give us Na, Cl. Ionic bonds are formed from the complete transfer of electrons to form ions. These ions would be the cations and the anions. We have an electron transfer diagram of Ca and 2Cl to demonstrate the formation of CaCl2. If we consider the SPDF configuration of Ca, 
what we can see is that there are two valence electrons in the 4s orbital. Considering the configuration of Cl, we can see that they are both one electron short of the S2 P6 valence shell configuration. From there, we can see that for calcium to gain a full valence electron shell, it will need to relieve the two electrons, while chlorine will need to gain one electron. So to balance this, we are able to react one atom of Ca with two atoms of Cl, which we can see in the diagram here. So what we see is that the calcium will relieve itself of each of its two outside valence electrons and give them, completely donate them, into the Cl where the empty space is. In the process, you'll get the formation of the Ca2 plus ion and the Cl minus ion. After this donation has occurred, what will happen is there will be an electrostatic attraction between the 2 plus and the negative charge of the Cl's to create the ionic bond. So now having formed ions, both calcium and chlorine are going to have their noble gas configuration and their fulfilled octet rule full valence shells. Ionic compounds have generally the same physical properties. They have high melting and boiling points, they are mostly solids at room temperature, and they are hard but brittle. Each of these physical properties can be explained by the strength of the latter structure. However, the reason why it is brittle is because when we subject this structure to an impact force, then ions of the same charge will get closer together. As a result of this, there will be a repulsion effect because of the same charges, and that will cause the lattice to shatter. Ionic compounds also do not conduct electricity in solid state. The reason is for this is because there are no free charge carriers, since all the ions have been tied up in the lattice. But, they do conduct electricity when they are molten or dissolved in solvent. This is because this leads to the release of the ions and the charges that are in their bonds. Ionic compounds also vary in their solubility, mostly being soluble in water, while others are a bit more insoluble such as barium sulfate. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.